My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we remember the Franciscan saint and priest, St. John of Capistrano. In this country, he's probably best known because he's mentioned in a song about the swallows of Capistrano. I don't know if he's mentioned, but Capistrano is the mission in California, and it was a popular, I think, a love song of some kind in the, probably in the 50s or something. So, But he's important uh, in the history of the church because he was a central figure in a decisive battle that uh, against the Turks in Hungary in 1456. He, why was he there? Well, uh, St. John of Capistrano was a contemporary and you could say um, was in an alliance with several other important Franciscan saints who were championing the reform of the Franciscan order. Uh, certain laxities had become commonplace. So uh, Saint, first St. Bernardine of Siena uh, was championing the observance and a more observant uh, style of life faithful to the rule of St. Francis. And so he was joined by two other saints, St. John of the Mark and St. John Capistrano. And St. John Capistrano, by training, uh, was a lawyer, if I'm not mistaken. He was certainly adept at preaching. That was one of his uh, great, he's famous for his preaching, but he was of the three of uh, these observant Franciscans when they were accused of heresy for preaching um, a special devotion to the holy name of Jesus that was St. Bernardine's uh, charismatic apostolate, St. John of Capistrano was the defender and against these accusations of heresy, and he was so impressive that then the Pope uh, singled him out to be a legate and sent him all over Europe to represent the interests of the church. St. John of Capistrano, at the age of 70, was then sent to Belgrade to assist their to preach a crusade to gather troops to defend Belgrade against the Ottoman Turks. The Sultan Mehmed was the conqueror, was, was attempting to take Belgrade and thus open a passage to Europe. So it was an important defense. And uh, as in other famous battles, the, the Christians were greatly outnumbered and St. John of Capistrano was there to preach a crusade to help uh, the civil leader, John Hunyadi, gather some troops. Uh, John Hunyadi was probably the, most, the strongest nobleman, and because of that, his other fellow uh, barons or the other leaders of, of the uh, land were more concerned with him as a threat to their power than the Turks. So he was on his own, basically, to raise whatever troops he could. And St. John of Capistrano was there, there to help. And the battle was not going so well. It, it, it raged for weeks. And then at a certain point, there was what's considered perhaps a miraculous uh, turn of events. Because they couldn't attract a great number of Christian troops, they had to rely on a number of peasants who were not trained warriors, um, but who were there with great enthusiasm. Enthusiasm, And at some point, these undisciplined, this undisciplined mob of peasants decided to start harassing the Turks, and it turned into an unplanned battle. And at that point, St. John of Capistrano at first tried to call them back, and then when he saw that wasn't working, he led the charge. And that decisive moment uh, turned the whole tide of the battle. Uh, the Turks were said to be seized by an inexplicable panic, and they were then routed and uh, 
left, left, and at, with great losses to their troops. So St. John Capistrano, at the age of 70, led uh, by a charismatic intuition, just took charge of this battle, which ended up uh, being the decisive moment. He left behind some writings, and so the second reading today from the officer readings, I just want to focus on one thing he says about priests, which is relevant always, but in a special way, um, by analogy to the, to the battle we're in right now as a church. He says, truly the unclean, immoral cleric is trampled underfoot like worthless manure. He is saturated with the filth of vice and entangled in the chains of sin. In this condition, he must be considered worthless both to himself and to others. As Gregory says, when a man's life is frowned upon, it follows that his preaching will be despised. This is relevant today as we see the church in crisis and a number of uh, prelates and in general an accusation against a number of priests uh, for leading immoral lives and committing heinous sins and crimes against members of the flock. Obviously, uh, they, they would follow under this general description that St. John gives. A priest who's not leading a holy life is of no use to himself or to others, and as we can see, to the contrary, does great harm. So, just as God can use a priest to lead people to victory, both especially in the spiritual realm, but even in the temporal realm, we need holy priests. And that you can all contribute to by especially praying for priests. Uh, the battles that a priest enters into most often are not temporal, but spiritual, and of a frail human nature can often uh, succumb to sin. And so let us pray for, for all our priests and all our clerics to be strong, to love Christ with an undivided heart so that uh, as the world wages war against Christ and his church, especially in, in the immoral culture that's being embraced by the secular world, uh, we need holy priests, saints, to lead the Christian people to battle and to victory in Christ. Let us pray then uh, with the intercession of St. John of Capistrano that priests today will be inspired to convert their lives to be pure and holy in Christ and thus able to gain victories and win back the culture for Christ. Praise be Jesus and Mary.